All right, all right, another math lesson um, for today. So we've done adding and uh, subtracting fractions. We're going to move into the other operations. So today we're going to do multiplying fractions um, and mixed numbers. So the, the first thing I'd like to do is just go over a couple key ideas um, that are important to remember when you are multiplying fractions. Um, the first one is don't waste your time finding common denominators. When you multiply, you don't need common denominators. When you add and subtract, the first thing you have to do is make sure that your denominators are the same thing. So if I'm adding thirds, I need to be adding it to thirds so that all the fractions are the same size. But when you multiply fractions, you do not need common denominators. And if you do uh, find common denominators, technically it's fine. You'll, you'll ultimately get to the right answer but your numbers are going to be much bigger to work with and it's gonna take a lot more to simplify your answers. So don't find common denominators. That's key idea number one. Second thing is you cannot multiply if you have a mixed number. If you have something, for example, like two and one third. This is a mixed number and you cannot multiply mixed numbers. You have to turn it into a fraction only, no whole number part to it. So just a quick aside, how do you turn mixed numbers into improper fractions? You multiply the denominator, three, by the whole number, two, so three times two is six, and you add it to the numerator, the number on top. So three times two is six, plus one is seven. So two and one thirds is really the same as seven over three. So you're going to, let's see if I can write this in here, multiply three times two and add to the number on top. But either way, you have to make any mixed numbers improper first and then you can multiply. So that's a big, a big thing to remember. Um, and then lastly, just the general steps um, to multiply fractions. After you've made sure all of your mixed numbers are improper, and you are not wasting your time finding common denominators, you are going to multiply the numbers on top together. Those are called the numerators. And then you're gonna multiply the numbers on the bottom together. Those are called the denominators. And that's it. Uh, the only extra step would be, if possible, simplify your fraction. But uh, the actual multiplying is just top times top, bottom times bottom, and then simplify if possible. So we're gonna go through a couple examples and that's it for today. Example one, we've got eight ninths times three fourths. Uh, so here it's nice and easy. I don't have any improper, uh, excuse me, any mixed numbers. They're all proper fractions, we're good to go. So as I had just said, it's just the top times the top. So eight times three is 24 over nine times four, which is 36. And you can simplify this by asking yourself, what number can go into both 24 and 36? There's a bunch of answers. It doesn't matter which you choose. You might be able to simplify it in one step. If you pick a number big enough, it might take more than one step and that's okay. I'm gonna say, let's divide both of these by, uh, they both share a common factor of four. 24 divided by four is six. 36 divided by four is nine. And six ninths, both of those numbers can be divided by three. And that's gonna get you a final answer. Six divided by three is two. And nine divided by three is three, two thirds. So um, eight ninths times three fourths in most simplest form, the product is two thirds. That's it. Uh, let's go on to an example where we have a mixed number because as I had just said, you cannot multiply when you have mixed numbers. You need to make this two and three fourths into an improper fraction. So let's do that. Two and three fourths uh, as an improper fraction. Four times two is eight. Eight plus three is 11. So two and three fourths can be rewritten as 11 fourths. So now I'm gonna rewrite my multiplication problem and this should be fairly simple now. 
1 times 11 is 11, and 4 times 2 is 8. 11 eighths. And that's an okay answer. Uh, we can make it better by simplifying this. Uh, and when I say simplify, I mean now we're going to do undo what we did up here. We're going to take this improper fraction and put it into mixed form. So 8, the denominator, can go into the numerator one time. 8 can go into 11 once with 3 left over. And now it's simplified. Can't make it any better than that. Uh, so 1 half times 2 and 3 fourths is 1 and 3 eighths. All right, let's do one more. Um, here we've got two mixed numbers. So I'm going to make both of those mixed numbers into improper fractions. Uh, 1 and 4 fifths. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. So this can be written as 9 fifths. And my other fraction, 3 and 2 thirds, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So I've got 9 fifths times 11 thirds. And so top times top, bottom, bottom times bottom, 9 times 11 is 99, 5 times 3 is 15. So 99 fifteenths is technically a correct answer. However, we can simplify this by asking ourselves, how many times can 15 go into 99? This is an improper fraction, and we're going to make it a mixed number. 15 can go into 99 six times. And um, when you do that, You've got 90, so that means 9 are left over, and 6 and 9 fifteenths. This fraction can be simplified by dividing both the numerator and denominator by a common factor of 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So your best possible final answer simplified is six and three fifths. Um, and, and that would be the product or the final answer for this multiplication problem, one and four fifths times three and two thirds. Cool, so the only other thing I'm gonna do is one quick word problem. Um, I think it's important because um, it's good to see keywords that are associated with multiplication, especially when it comes to fractions. You'll almost always see word problems that are um, involving multiplying fractions have this keyword. So let's read the problem. You have two-thirds of a bag of flour. You use three-fourths of the flour to make empanada dough. How much of the entire bag do you use? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is just restate this question using different words. How much is three-fourths of two-thirds. How did I know that this is what it's asking? It says, how much of the entire bag do you use? Well, I'm. it's really asking, I use three-fourths of the bag, and the bag is two-thirds of the way full. So I'm using three-fourths of two-thirds of a bag of flour. I hope you can see where I came up with that. It's important to restate questions in uh, different words so that you can see what it's asking and then come up to figuring out, all right, am I multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting? What's even happening here? The way that I know that this is a multiplication problem is the key word of. Of is, if you ever see a problem stated like this, three-fourths of two-thirds, something of something else. Of always means multiplication when it comes to math. So uh, let me first just say, don't just say, oh, I see the word of, it means multiply. It has to be in some kind of form like this, three-fourths of two-thirds, a number of something else. Um, just because the word of is in a problem doesn't necessarily mean multiplication. But when you have a number of another number, 100% you're going to be multiplying. So Let's just write this as a multiplication problem. Three-fourths of times two-thirds. And this is easy. Three times two is six. 
4 times 3 is 12. 6 twelfths can be simplified. That's another way of writing 1 half. And let's go back to the question. How much of the entire bag do you use to make the dough? You use half of the bag. That's what it's asking us. It was two-thirds of the way full. You used three-fourths of that two-thirds. And when it was all said and done, how much did you use? Well, three-fourths of two-thirds is one-half. You used one-half of the bag of flour. And that would be your final answer. All right. Um, good luck with your work today. If you have questions, we'll be doing uh, our Google Meet. Please join and ask, but otherwise show your work, uh, take your time with things, don't rush. Really take the time to solidify this skill and uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy your math and enjoy other things that are not math because it's summer. Bye.